Hi guys, Tim here, and welcome to my analytical or semiotic breakdown of the curious incident of the dog in the night time by Mark Haddon. So we're going to look at a couple of things today. First of all, just a quick allude to the title, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. If you're completing your HSC in New South Wales or studying this book for any other reason, well then I hope that this podcast or this YouTube video gets or gives you some greater insight into this particular text. As you know, most of my, most of my analysis is me just riffing, if I could say that, and use a colloquialism, or me ad-libbing. I teach this text, I've read this text, I teach all the texts that I analyse, and I've done a lot of work on it, but to a greater extent, I enjoy the element of breaking things down without any editing, so to speak, and I hope that you gain something of it. So this is my breakdown of this text, or two components of this text, warts and all, if I can use that metaphor slash cliche. Okay, so looking at the curious incident, obviously the title is an illusion, mild referencing and even intertextuality in relation to a fictional character, Sherlock Holmes, in one of his short stories, Adventure of Silver Blaze. Now, if you wanted to really dig and play with that narrative, pardon the pun, but play with that metaphor a little bit as well, and play with that illusion, of course, the curious incident is a bit like a mystery within a mystery in that rather than we trying to find out about the curious incident of the dog in the night, we're also finding out the mysteries that lie within those that sit on our spectrum. Okay, so you see what I'm trying to do here, see how this carefully intertwined piece of text really plays out so many narratives. So that's just my intro into the technical aspects of the title. Okay, not only is it illusion, but it's also a bit of a mystery and a search for what it is like to live with, to be to work with or to even nurture a young person on the spectrum. But let's get to my first point of analysis, really, that was just a mild intro. And that first point of analysis is to do with the chapters. Now, I'm pretty sure if you're studying the HSC, your teachers have gone over this with you, and that's fine, that's good. And I, And you might be thinking, well, This piece of analysis might be a little bit overdone. You see it in a few guides and so to speak. But I thought I'll just give you my my perspective on it at least. There'll be a few more pieces of analysis on this text, but I thought I'll just give you mine. Okay, so looking at the chapters, we know that they're in a certain formation. We call them prime numbers. And that is uh, an introduction into the way young Christopher, the protagonist in this text, sees numbers. And this has symbolic value, if anything else, if nothing else, sorry. So why have the chapters in these numbers? Well, obviously, we're thinking POV point of view. We're also thinking an introduction to Christopher's life. But most of all, it's designed to confront, challenge your view on the way he sees the world. I know I'm sounding like the syllabus, but that's the whole point. The syllabus does reflect the text and the, and vice versa. The text reflects the syllabus. And that's the whole point of it. And that's why you must carefully look at both documents, I think, and really find connective elements of them. So back to those prime numbers. Before I begin, and not before I begin, but before I expand further onto this point, I would also like to raise a very important issue for you and one that somewhat is important to me as well in reference to how I analyze a text. If you're doing most exams, they are requiring you to make reference to the written text, not the audio book. Now, when I first read slash heard The Curious Incident, that's my colloquial for it, please, I put the audio book or I listened to the audio book first. I put the audio book in my car 
and driving to work, I'd listen to the text. Now, from the audiobook perspective than it does when you read it, because when you flick those pages over and you visually see those numbers, you realise the prime number element of it and you realise the technical value and you see things from Christopher's point of view and you go into a mild state of confusion and then you see the world through his eyes and that is the point of it. But as an audio piece, the value is just multiplied because if you're driving or you're listening and suddenly chapter, randomly here please, chapter 13 becomes chapter 57, for that split second, you enter Christopher's world. For that split second, you see it through his eyes and it works superlatively. Now, Reading it, you can still use that angle in your analysis and refer to it as a written text. Hand on heart, it does, well, I think it does work a lot better hearing it in an audio book, just for that element anyway. But I think most of what you can get in terms of analysis from the audiobook version relating to the prime numbers is as relevant as a written piece. So please still go with that prime number symbolism aspect of the text in your analysis. It works very, very well. Now, associated with that would be the icons within the text, okay? And again, the icons within the text are symbolic. They're also point of view. And again, they let you enter Christopher's life, see the world as he does, react to others as he does, portray his feelings as he does, be confronted as he is, be challenged as he is, and most of all, create that sense of empathy from the reader. This is my world, welcome to it. And Mark Haddon does a very, very, very astute job in this instance. He really opens up this life to us On the other side, he gives us a taste. Now, blurring the lines between our lives, those little icons work very well. Okay, As we read, we see these little emojis, if you want to call them, happy face or smiley face or angry or things like that. And we look at that and we go, what? What? Okay. And sometimes, you know, the amalgamation of text and an image is a bit like his life. There's an amalgamation between two elements that are generally not supposed to fit. But welcome to his life. Sometimes looking at the world through his eyes are strange little amalgamations that really don't fit. And it might take a little bit of time to figure them out. And in that time it takes you to figure them out is a time where you might be looked at a bit differently. The whole concept of putting things together that might not always fit, but then, ah, look, they fit in the end, is that length of time that we might have a differing view on Christopher. That is the beauty of this text. Okay, so now I've given you possibly three different technical aspects that you can refer to in your essay. The title as a piece of illusion or intertextuality. The use of symbols and emojis, and of course, the big one, the chapters. Okay, I've given you techniques from symbolism to point of view. So guys, there'll be maybe a couple more of my breakdowns of The Curious Incident, both on YouTube and on this podcast. So follow on, subscribe and like. Thank you very much.